Hi folks, I'm back to try another video and I'm, this time I'm using some stencils and stencil paste. I've done quite a few already and I'll show you those in a few moments. I'll pick them up from where they're drying and bring them over. A lot of the tips that I'm going to give you while I'm doing this are not my information at all. They're things that I've learned from Lucy Ellis who is the owner and designer for well not not just designer but the owner for Sweet Poppy and she does design a lot of the stencils a lot of others are done by Lavinia Stamps and she has one or two other designers as well but I learned a lot from watching Lucy she does have videos on YouTube if you don't get a chance to see her when she's demoing at craft shows and they're definitely worth a watch because I was, when I first bought them, much as I loved the stencils and the paste, I was really struggling to get good, clean images. And I went to watch Lucy demo at a local shop to me, and within 10 minutes I'd seen four things that I was doing wrong. So she's very, very knowledgeable about her products. And as I say, well, if you haven't used them, well worth going and giving her videos a look and pick up her excellent tips. One of which is a magnetic sheet. Now I buy magnetic sheets to store my dies on and that's all this is. I've actually backed it onto a piece of cardboard to make it a little more solid, but stuck down onto my craft mat. Your cardstock on top of your magnetic plate and then your stencil and you can see that really really grips so it stops it moving about your next thing is tape and again don't skimp on the tape Lucy's recommendations are two pieces at the top two pieces at the bottom and then one down either side. And it really isn't worth skimping on tape. It's cheap enough and it's far less frustrating than having to keep throwing pieces in the bin because you've got stencil paste where you didn't want it. One thing I will say is make absolutely sure, especially at the bottom, that you really press the stencil tape down well onto the stencil because you're going to drag your paste down and if this isn't stuck down, you've got a very good chance of pushing paste underneath the stencil, underneath the uh, stencil tape and onto your cardstock. So make sure it's really stuck firmly to your stencil. Then you need a spreader. I have two of these actually. I have somewhere, but I can't see it right now. It's probably put in a drawer somewhere because I don't tend to use it. I did have the Dreamweaver one and that is more of a semicircle than this one is but this is the Sweet Poppy one and I find this one much much easier to get an even pressure all across my stencil. Palette knife which I've also got from Sweet Poppy just for scooping the paste out. I mean you may have other um, palette knives that will work just as fine but this one's really really easy to clean so and it's just got the right shape so I like that so I'm going to do one and I'm going to use gold paste for this one so I can have some gold holly don't stir your paste just use it as it comes out of the tub few blobs along the top again don't skimp on it you're going to put 90% of that paste back into the tub so it's not something you use a lot of but don't skimp on having it there you want to try and cover as much of your stencil in one spread as you can the more times you drag 
across the stencil, the greater the chances of forcing paste underneath the design. So plenty of paste there. And that was the other thing, another thing I was doing wrong. I was just dolloping the paste onto my stencil. Start with the paste, that's where you have two pieces up there. You have start with your stencil paste off your stencil and drag it across. Don't dollop it onto the stencil. Baby wipes I have on hand to clean the paste off my tools as I'm working. And then take hold of your spreader. You want something like a 45 degree angle to your stencil. Start with the spreader above the paste and firm pressure drag it down and as you can see you should be able to get most of your stencil covered in one if you've missed any spots like that one there you just add a little bit in but only do it gently scrape up all the excess paste and that goes back in your pot just take off any excess from either side and we're done and as you can see the vast majority of that paste went straight back into the tub very very little is actually used so although it looks like you're piling on a huge amount of paste it's not a heavy use of the product and again cleaning everything off with a baby wipe you could drop these into your tub to clean but I just find that's just as easy lid back on your stencil paste and then you start removing your stencil tape remove your bottom ones now don't remove the top ones you want to use that as a hinge it's actually easier if you can slide that down but I've got it taped to my craft mat because these craft mats are quite slidey so lift it up peel it off with its tape tape in the bin and then the stencil goes into the top that I've just shown you Clean up any escaped paste to avoid putting your arm in it. And there you have your stencil paste holly background. Now what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to sprinkle glamour dust onto it. There are a lot of very pretty sweet poppy ultra fine glitters and I've used all sorts of glitter on ones that I've done you don't want a really chunky glitter it does need to be a fine glitter because otherwise it's not going to stick but just giving it a good sprinkling of glamour dust so I'll just get a nice sparkle to it when it's dry There we have it. It's going to dry much, much shinier than that. And I will show you these when they've dried out so you can see the difference.
Now these are a few that I've done earlier on today. This one is using the Sweet Poppy dark green stencil paste and Glamour Dust. This one I used a different one. This I just have some Dreamweaver embossing paste and this is a copper colour. So I've used that and I used some copper glitter and some dark green glitter just to get a two-tone effect on that one. This one was gold embossing paste and the green glitter again and some gold glitter. And this one used the Sweet Poppy silver embossing paste with some silver glitter and the dark green glitter again. So pop those out of the way and just collect up the glamour dust again. So now I need to scrub my stencil before I can do another one. So I'll be back with you in a few moments. In fact, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring my cleaning things across here so I can do it under the camera for you and I leave my stencil lay flat in the bottom and just go over it with my nail brush flip it over do the other side lay it down onto my towel and use a second one I just use I've just laid claim to some bath towels that were starting to get really thin and worn and again pat them dry don't rub don't scrub flip it over and make sure the other side's nice and dry and there you have a clean stencil without having done it any damage whatsoever. So let me just get rid of this. And I'm going to do another one. So again, card on top of the magnetic plate. Stencil on top of that, then stencil paste. No, stencil tape is what I meant to say, not stencil paste. That bit comes in a minute. Should we do this one? Actually, I'll show you something else you can do. And I have a pot of translucent stencil dimensions paint. Now, what you uh, paste, what you can do is two things. You can colour your pastes I might help if I could remember which one I'll be stressing in case I'm there they are Mode lawn might not be dark enough You can colour your pastes with inks, with paints I'm pretty sure you can use brushos to colour them as well 
one thing I will say, if you're using a liquid ink to colour your pastes, the normal advice for something when you're colouring it would be to start off light and keep adding a little bit more to get the colour you want. You don't want to make this too thin by adding lots and lots of ink. So in this instance, and bearing in mind it's going to go lighter anyway, go as close to the colour you want as possible the first time. So, I think forest moss might be a bit dark. Excuse me, leaning out a shot into the drawer. Peeled paint, that looks like it might be about right. probably the closest I'm going to get so put yourself a dollop on your craft mat add a couple of spots of ink and mix them well together. And I think ideally I would have wanted something a little darker than that, so I don't want to add a lot more of that one. I'm going to grab forest moss and add a drop of that to it. something else you can do. If you excuse me for one second I will return. You can make your own glitter paste. Now I know you can buy glitter paste. I have one or two in my drawer. These are the Cosmic Shimmer ones but they're not cheap not for the size of the pot they're not cheap and you may not want to use that much but what you can do is again using an ultra fine glitter and this is just a crystal one you can mix glitter into your embossing paste and you can do that with this with the colored ones as well not just with colors you use yourself you can add some gold glitter to gold paste and so on and it's a very good way of getting a glittery look to things on your cards without any glitter shed because once it's mixed into the paste and it dries It's, it's set there. And I think I'm actually going to add a little bit of dark green to this as well, just to give us a bit of colour variation. This is one of those, just have a play with it and see what you end up with sort of techniques really. But it's definitely worth, if you like what you're doing, trying to make enough to do however many projects you want to do at the time. Because it's going to be very hard to duplicate a colour if you're doing a custom mix of colour like this. Very hard to duplicate it and get it exactly the same. So 
try and get it all mixed more than enough mixed up if you find you've got a lot more than you're going to use a really good idea are these sort of little pots I mean um, Lucy does do empty pots like this which are great for storing excess in if you've only got small amounts these little tubs that you can pick up really cheaply on eBay you can buy similar small pots um, for in travel kits for makeup and all that sort of thing and they're brilliant for storing your excess paste in so we've got our glitter paste on a little bit short of covering the whole stencil in one go but not much you will find you've possibly it will sometimes pull away from the edges because of the roughness of the glitter in it but it's easy enough to just add a little and spread it back and put your excess into a tub and it will keep for quite a few weeks as long as you've got nicely sealed lids on them you could also probably increase the seal on the lids by adding um, a bit of cling film across the top before you put the lid on Always leave the top two pieces of tape to use as a hinge to lift your stencil with. Back in for cleaning. I'm not going to add glitter to this because we've already added it into the paste. But again, I'll show you these when they've dried out so you can see what we end up with. And that was just done using the translucent paste. something different now, a different stencil, onto a different piece of card. And this one I'm going to use is three um, Christmas ornaments. But the process is the same. so I can see what I'm doing properly. Two at the bottom. Two at the top. One down either side. I'm going to use a black paste for this one because I intend to there it is, foil these and I find this one gives quite a good solid foil coverage and I'll, I'll do the foiling video 
after, next after I've done this one so you'll sort of get the whole process because I saw a member of um, Sweet Poppy's design team Julie Rose do this and it's such a fantastic technique I really love it it's wonderful for Christmas cards for things like ornaments be careful getting paste on your fingers because it's very easy then to transfer that to somewhere on your design that you didn't want paste so another good reason to have the baby wipes handy and again one swipe straight down to take the majority of the paste off up the sides to get your ornaments nice and flat. Out come the baby wipes again and this one is really easy to get on your fingers. And again make sure you clean your spatulas and spreaders between uses because otherwise you're going to end up muckying up the wrong colour of paste with the wrong type. Look back on the black. Gently as you lift your tape, it works best, I find, if you... Fortunately, I'm going to be trimming this down because I've ended up with going over the edge. But that's not going to make any difference. If you gently peel your tape, and keep it low as you pull it off you have far less likelihood of doing any damage to your cardstock okay. lift the stencil and drop it in for a wash and I always try and clean my fingers before I actually lift my piece of work so I don't put mucky fingerprints where I don't want them. Now again this, if you wanted, and I've done this before, you can sprinkle glitters in different colours onto different parts of the designs, different colours for each balls, but I'm going to foil this one so I'm just going to put this one aside to dry. going to scrub the stencil with you with the stencil <coughs> and sometimes if you find you've got fluff such as I've got there from that towel these microfiber cloths are great for getting them off just gently wiping any away I've got another piece of paper pieces at the top, two pieces at the bottom, and one either side. Now I bought some um, stencil tape but you can use ordinary decorator, any low tack 
um, tape. If you think it's a little bit too tacky, just dab it off onto your clothes before you actually use it and that will take some of the tack away but still leave enough that it will stick. So what am I going to do now? <coughs> I think I will do... I think in fact I'll do another... I'm going to do these in silver I think. Very much definitely do it fairly rapidly and try and cover the whole design in one and then just remove any excess afterwards. And it all goes back into the pot. And then we have a silver one. Yeah, put a little bit down the edge won't hurt because it's going to get trimmed down. Again, you, you can you can glitter these. In fact, let's give that a go, shall we? Now, there's lots of ways of doing this. Lucy does it with a Paintbrush. I was always going to be in the last drawer. You can glitter a whole ornament the same way. You can do all three the same way if you want to. If you want to do them differently then make sure that you tip the glitter away from the other two when you do it. So I've got silver there, I've got some red over here. Make sure you've got the edges covered as well. And again, it does definitely help you want a microfine glitter such as the Sweet Poppy glitters. Because it, if the glitter is too chunky, it's not going to stick properly. And it, you're not going to get an even coverage when it dries. And let's have copper.
and then we have three glittered ornaments. And again, these will just go to one side now and be left to dry out. <laughs> 